In a woman's mind, you're not measured or remembered by how good you made her feel, or how many nice things you did for her, or how eager you were to please her, or how much time you spent with her, or even how much of yourself you dedicated to her. All you'll ever be measured or remembered by is the quality and intensity of the impact you leave in her. That is it. And the process of leaving said impact is what we refer to as imprinting. Anything less and you will be forgotten. That's a fact. So from now on, don't think of a relationship as a measure of time. Think about it more as how much impact you can make within a certain period of time. So what exactly goes into imprinting? How does it actually work? When it comes down to it, it's all about investment. Follow me here. This is very important. What most women conveniently label as an emotional connection is really just her willingness to invest in another person emotionally. And the greater the impact the man makes on her, the more emotionally invested she is aka the more she cares. The less impact the man makes, the less she gives a shit. So this is a game of getting her to invest emotionally in you, and ideally a lot more than you invest in her. So naturally we have to observe the laws of investment, and figure out how investment works. Investment comes down to three major things. Consequence, risk, reward. Basically there's something you want, a reward, the amount of sacrifice you're willing to make to get that reward, the risk, and the adverse consequence associated with that sacrifice not panning out. Getting a woman to properly emotionally invest will come down to your ability to manipulate those three variables and progressively increase all three. Because a juicy reward requires more risk and sacrifice and comes with harsher penalties and consequences. Most men are completely forgotten by the women they date because they didn't know or blatantly refuse to put women through the highs and lows of the roller coaster ride called emotional investment. Do you get it now? You need to increase the stakes in your relationship for her to actually give a fuck about it. And the more fucks she gives, the better your relationship. Otherwise, at the first sign of trouble, which is inevitable, she's going to be looking to jump ship. Oh, and by the way, you both need to be invested for this to work. Otherwise, it simply will not. I am convinced that a lack of mutual investment between the two parties in the relationship is why the divorce rate is so damn high. Consequence and the fear of it, whether you like it or not, is going to be the number one driving force of your relationship. But Jason, wouldn't relationships be based on love, not fear? Bullshit, we're animals. The number one driving force of the human race is the fear of consequence. And that's not a bad thing, by the way. Don't villainize that in your mind. Follow me on this analogy real quick. Let's say you got $1,000 to fuck off with. And you decide you want to go to the casino. And you put that $1,000 on the roulette table. You put all your money on black and you lose. How do you honestly feel about that? Exactly. You don't feel shit. Because that $1,000 you just lost was disposable income. Now let's say for instance that same $1,000 was actually your rent money. All of a sudden you're not just hoping it lands on black. You're pretty much praying to God it does. Because the stakes are higher and the consequences are dire now. And so you now give more of a fuck about the results of this game. Now that we understand how emotional investment works. And specifically the correlation between risk, reward, and consequence. It's time we talk about the principles of emotional investment. Or more specifically, the conditions that need to be met before emotional investment can happen. The first thing you need to know is that investment of any kind, whether that be financial, parental, emotional, physical, or otherwise, is always made with one thing in mind. The ultimate hope of receiving a return on that investment. Absolutely no one would make an investment if they felt like the risk they were taking for that investment wasn't worth it. Another way to put it is that people, men and women alike, only feel comfortable making an investment when they believe that the return for that investment is greater than the investment itself. If a woman were to ever decide to emotionally invest in you, whether she realizes it or not, she has accepted the fact that she gets more out of the relationship with you than she actually puts into it. Basically, it's a positive ROI going in her favor. Now, whenever I speak like this, inevitably people complain that I treat relationships as transactional. And to that I say, yes, ultimately they are. But the key is to subconsciously understand that relationships are transactional without consciously acting like they are transactional. Basically, understand deep down that every relationship is a value exchange without actually saying it out loud. Pointing out the transactional nature of relationships breaks the fourth wall and fucks up the etiquette, so don't do that. And let me teach you a mindset that'll help you understand how to move like this. Let's use an analogy that applies to everyday life. Whenever you're hungry and you decide you want to pull up to your favorite chicken sandwich spot, let's keep it simple for the sake of this example and say that your favorite sandwich on the menu costs five American dollars. Have you ever sat down to ask yourself why you're so willing to pay five bucks for that sandwich? I mean, yeah, it's a great sandwich and it is delicious. But the truth is it's quite a simple sandwich. You could realistically go home and spend the time to make the sandwich yourself. And you can make a lot more for a lot cheaper than five bucks. So why are you so willing to let your five dollars go for this chicken sandwich? It's quite simple, really. It's because it saves you time, energy, effort, manpower, expertise, and skill sets you just don't have. 
You paid the ridiculous markup of $5 for one of these sandwiches. Because when you really think about it, for a hot ready-made sandwich, $5 is not a ridiculous markup at all. Imagine how much time and effort you would waste if you had to make it yourself. Imagine how much time and effort you would be wasting if you had to go to the lettuce farmer to go get some lettuce, and then the tomato farmers for some tomatoes, and then the cow farmer for the beef and the milk, and then the wheat farmer for some wheat. If we didn't already have a place called a supermarket where all these ingredients are curated just for you. Hell, the next time you're at the grocery store and you're complaining about prices, imagine we didn't have these farmers and we had to grow everything ourselves. I bet you're feeling a lot more grateful for that overpriced sandwich, aren't you? And if you're really smart, you've probably put it together by now that these sandwiches are actually underpriced. It is not my intention to shove capitalism down your throat like this, but... Let's be honest here. Everyone within the supply chain of this chicken sandwich is getting severely underpaid. And that's ultimately because of how investment works in the psychology of human beings. In reality, when you crunch the numbers and you take everything into consideration that goes into creating this use value, this ready-made chicken sandwich, believe it or not, it should actually be priced somewhere around $40, but it's only five. Why? Because the human spirit, as a principle, does not actually believe in equivalent exchange. No successful exchange or transaction is ever equal. And this is especially true in relationships. Otherwise, buyer's remorse immediately kicks in. Both parties within the exchange have to feel like they're getting more than they're actually putting in. And if that sounds tricky or impossible, it's not. It all comes down to one very simple word, perception. It's very possible for both parties to feel like they're getting more than they're putting into the relationship. In fact, that, by definition, is what a successful relationship is. Because the alternative is where one person feels like they're not getting as much as the other person, and unless something changes drastically, that relationship is doomed to fail. Which brings me to the second condition that needs to be met for emotional connection and investment to happen. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to like this one. As the man in the relationship, you have to be okay with being in a value surplus in all your relationships. In simple terms, you're always going to be the partner that represents the higher value. Don't ask me, that's just how the game is set up. Women are biologically designed to be attracted to men that are better than them. They almost never admit it, but it's true. Which means if you're a man in the dating game, you have to be okay with, in general, giving more value than you receive. And not just up front, but in the back end as well. Remember how I said that every relationship is ultimately a transaction, but you shouldn't treat it as such? It turns out on a psychological level, the best way to do that is just being okay with giving without expecting in return. Not to the point of naivete where you keep getting taken advantage of, of course. But in general, you just gotta learn to be cool and charge most things to the game. It is what it is. Women will perceive you as needy and creepy if you keep sweating the small stuff all the fucking time. You gotta have faith that when you give enough value into the situation, the law of reciprocity will kick in naturally. And she will, without even realizing why, feel the need and be obliged to give you something in return. Alright, let's not get too sidetracked. In summary, if you want emotional investment from her, then you need to represent a lot of value to justify that level of investment to her. That way she can feel more comfortable taking that level of risk with you, okay? Now when I say that, especially if you're like one of them red pill dudes, you're probably thinking, Oh, I know, this looks money status, yeah. And come on now, we all went through 2022. We all know for a fact that looks or money or status isn't the answer. So pay attention while I actually give you the real one. Allow me, once more, to shift your paradigm around us. In order for a woman to justify emotionally investing in you properly, you need to be at what we call a value surplus to her. Basically, she needs to see you as the kind of man that's worth making the investment for. And remember now, the greater the investment, the higher the chance you have an impact on her, and the stronger your everlasting imprint on her. Remember, increasing the consequence of the relationship over time increases her investment in the relationship. And in my personal experience, the best way to go about doing that is to become a man of consequence to her. The greater the consequence of being in a relationship with you. In other words, the more adverse the consequence of leaving you is, the less chances that happens and the more likely she is to stay and invest more. So how do you become a man of consequence to her? Good question. It really comes down to your ability to demonstrate a few traits. Or more specifically, one trait in a few different ways. Think about it like the seven deadly sins. If you really look at them, it's not seven different sins. It's one sin manifested in seven different ways. And that one sin is the inability to control yourself, a lack of discipline. And there are seven major ways that lack of discipline manifests itself. 
a lack of self-control around who you get naked with, that's lust. Can't control your emotions, that's wrath. Lack of self-control around what you put in your face, that's gluttony. No self-control around comparing yourself to others, that's envy. And so on and so forth. In order to become the ideal candidate for emotional investment in her mind, you need to demonstrate only one trait. That trait being the perfect balance between power and control. You need to show the ability to exude and project power without letting it get to your head or hurting yourself and others in the process. I've compiled together a list of seven different things that you can use to demonstrate that one trait. And I'm appropriately naming them the seven gifts because those are the gifts you have to give to women to be in a value surplus to them. Starting with number one, protection. This one is fairly simple but also counterintuitive. Most men still don't understand that the last thing you should do if you want to make a woman feel safe around you is to be as safe and accommodating and agreeable as possible. As counterintuitive as it sounds, the men that women feel the safest around are the men who have the highest capacity for danger and violence. It's caveman shit. It's no accident that throughout history women have always gravitated towards the most dangerous men. Because from an evolutionary standpoint, a man's capacity for danger and violence is directly proportional to his ability to do what's necessary to keep her safe. Most especially when what's necessary to do isn't the easiest thing to do. Now again, it's power and control. So with this one, you must remember not to turn your capacity for violence towards her. I think that's like obvious enough. Because not only is that ethically and morally wrong, but that defeats the entire point of giving her the gift of safety and protection. Her power should be used to bring safety to her, not take it away. The next gift you give women for maximum impact is wisdom and experience. Especially if you want multiple long-term relationships with multiple women running at the same time, this one right here is going to be useful to you. It's such a rare and valuable gift to give to women. Not just because most guys don't have wisdom and experience, but because even fewer have the ability to convey that wisdom. I treat my personal relationships like an opportunity to teach. Whether it's a skill or a craft or a hobby, or even something that might be of interest to me in the moment. I'm always looking for an opportunity to teach. And you would be genuinely surprised how eager women are to learn from you. Especially when you have a lot of knowledge and wisdom and experience to give. Whether it's giving them a different way to think about something. Or a new perspective they've never had before. Or a life lesson from a personal experience you've once had. Or even just an idea you've been bouncing around in your brain. Hell, it can even be something as simple as a book recommendation. You should always be looking for opportunities to add value with the wisdom you have. This is also one of the reasons I emphasize so heavily on storytelling. Storytelling is by far the most effective and by far best shortcut I know for transferring your wisdom from your head into another person's. I cannot emphasize how important it is. Becoming a skillful storyteller will dramatically improve your communication. And because of the way they're structured to have emotional spikes within them, stories are by far one of the best ways to make an immediate emotional impact in a very short amount of time. A well-told story can quite literally cement you within the walls of her mind for life. Now imagine having a relationship full of stories that she'll never forget. Stories that she wasn't even there to witness, but you gave her the gift of living vicariously through you and your stories. With all that said though, it is impossible to give women wisdom and experience you just don't have. Or even worse, that you don't quite understand yourself. Which makes you a terrible leader because you are now misguiding her. Please make sure that whatever wisdom and experience you impart in her is truly yours. It's a lot easier to be consistent over a long period of time if you're telling your stories instead of other people's. Trust me, you don't want to be borrowing stories. Oh, and by the way, in case you're wondering, you definitely have wisdom to give. Never doubt that about yourself. If you're listening to the sound of my voice right now, then you've lived long enough to have a very unique human experience. A unique experience that you can now share with her. So don't be scared. Give her the gift of finding out how your brain works. Yes, including all that crazy shit you'll be thinking about in the shower. Those ones are the bangers. Trust me, do not hold those ones back. The next gift you give women for a value surplus is leadership. Quite honestly, I would personally say that women pretty much only get into relationships because of leadership. Because as unpopular an opinion as it might be, the truth is that women are just dying to be told what to do. All women all over the world are starving on a daily basis for a man that'll swoop in, take charge, and lead. Not because women are intellectually lazy or completely helpless on their own. Okay, some of them are. Or even because they don't like to take accountability which I know is a popular opinion. The reason women actually like leadership is very simple. 
it gives them the space to be what they truly want to be, which is feminine and carefree. A lot of women just don't have the space to be that way. And unfortunately, we're now living in a world where they're being told that being that way is bad. But if most women are being honest with themselves, they're far better off and feel more fulfilled when they just lean back, relax, and let a man take charge. A competent one, that is. But when you lean forward and offer a woman your guiding hand, you are offering to her a virtue, a massive gift that she would otherwise never receive from anyone else. Because not all men can lead. And of those who can lead, even fewer feel the need to lead her. Because leadership is a burden of responsibility. And as much as you may try, believe me, I have, it is impossible to wrap every single bitch under the cloak of your leadership and protection. So if you are capable of leadership, understand you hold a very valuable gift. And honestly, I would advise you to distribute it very sparingly. Not every woman deserves that much time and effort from you. Now, if you don't think of yourself as a leader, I have a few suggestions for you. Number one, like I said, leadership is a burden of responsibility. So in order to be a leader, you must learn to be responsible for yourself and for others as well. Take it upon yourself to carry the health, safety, and well-being of others on your fucking shoulders. Like with learning any other thing, you're going to suck at it at first. Learn from mistakes, learn from them, recover quickly. Number two, stop making suggestions, start making demands. Absolutely no one on earth is incentivized to put you in a position of leadership. You're going to have to take it. As you navigate yourself through the social world trying to assert yourself as a leader, you will most definitely run into resistance. Face them. Don't cower. And finally, and probably most important, have a destination. Let's not forget the entire point of leadership is, well, to lead. Which means you're bringing her along with you. Which means you're going somewhere. I don't mean to sound too obvious, but I'm pretty sure it's kind of hard to lead when you don't know where you're going, right? You'll have a lot more confidence to drive forward if you have a roadmap, or at the very least, a vague idea of where you're going. Structure is the next gift, and an underrated one. People always ask me, where do you find good women? And I always answer the exact same way. Good women are not found, they are created. No woman will ever come to you the exact way you want her to. It is your job as the man to build your woman from scratch. And structure is a tool you will use to do just that. If you're actually paying attention to how most women live their lives on a daily basis, you'll come to find that practically all of them are unfulfilled. And a big reason for that is because they lack structure and organization. Basically, a lot of women are existing at random in a chaotic fashion. So finding a man that can help them make sense of everything is invaluable to them. And that's the real gift you're giving women when you provide them with structure. You're giving them some sense of certainty and control, especially on a daily basis. You're helping her to demystify the complexities of life. And you're pretty much giving her a script or a manual of sorts that she can follow to a T without getting flustered, anxious, or confused. When it comes down to the implementation of the skill set that is structure, the major skill you will need is your clairvoyance. Basically, your ability to see into the future and plan accordingly. Because that's where the ultimate sense of certainty comes from. And you need to be more certain than her in order to give her structure. Now hold on, before you go building your bitch from scratch, I wouldn't be a good teacher if I didn't give you a necessary warning here. Pay close attention. Because of the gods of this game we play are cruel and mischievous, there is a downside to how structure works. Another way to put it is there's a price you have to pay for giving a woman structure. And the price is, while you may gain control over the situation, you end up losing a bit of raw power and respect. Let me explain why. Don't forget, the entire point of these seven gifts is to make a significant impact in the woman you're with. All these gifts are just an attempt at being in a massive value surplus to the woman. Because representing massive value is how you become a man of consequence in her mind, right? It's achieving the balance between power and control. She has to see you as powerful, but not to the point of losing control and using your power against her. Structure is essentially the guarantee that you will never get to this point of losing control. And the problem with that is that you become predictable. The threat of your unpredictability or you deviating from the script is just gone now. AKA, you're now boring. On this list of seven gifts, there are two gifts that I like to call yo-yo gifts. That's my own way of saying the effect of them are not really felt until you take them away. Structure is the first yo-yo gift. So I'm going to warn you right now, you got to be careful with this one. Especially for you uh, financially stable nice guys out there. From where I'm standing, y'all struggle with this one the most. 
It'll feel good to play the hero that saves the damsel in distress for a little while, but if you don't balance it out and show your teeth from time to time and a willingness to walk away, then you'll lose to the guy that's willing to show a little bit more unpredictability than you. Sometimes help to calm the chaos, other times indulge in it with her. The next gift you give women for a value surplus, discipline. No joke, this might be my second favorite one. And a big reason for that is what can happen when you use discipline correctly. In my mind, the difference between a woman that has a high barrier or low barrier to entry, aka a hoe, comes down to her own personal level of discipline. In fact, my own personal definition of a hoe is essentially a woman with no discipline. She's reckless, impatient, impulsive, and has absolutely no ability to delay gratification. She's always saying no to pain and yes to pleasure whenever she can. It's hard to say no to pleasure, even harder to say yes to pain. But the ability to do both simultaneously, that's discipline. And as a man, it'll be your job to give the woman you take seriously discipline. Now, before you even ask, I'm going to tell you up front right now. Finding a woman with high levels of discipline out in the wild is a tall order. Women are essentially slaves to their biological impulses. So unless acted upon by an external force, aka you, they have absolutely no incentive to be disciplined. And that's bad for you because if you choose to invest in her, then she'll choose her biological impulses over you 100% of the time. Discipline is how you shift her focus from her need for immediate gratification to you. Essentially how you juxtapose yourself over her biological impulses and build a psychological wall around her that keeps other would-be attackers away. Because unless she has a certain level of discipline, <laughs> that's everybody's bitch. And you don't have the time of day to deal with a woman with a low barrier to entry. Nobody does. So essentially, discipline is pretty much the only gift that you'll give that'll benefit you just about as much as it'll benefit her. Aside from the next gift we're going to talk about, it's pretty much the most selfish gift there is to give. It's pretty cool. Now, surprise, surprise, just like all the other gifts, you can't give something you do not have. Means if you're going to go through the endeavor of creating a disciplined woman, you're going to have to be a disciplined man yourself. No way around it. You have to defeat your own biological impulses by saying yes to pain and no to pleasure as often as you can. And then from fighting those demons and winning consistently, you can then show her how to do it. Now, here's a fair warning, though. Women will watch your every move like a hawk. And your actions around her are essentially the expectations you're setting for her. Do not try to fake levels of discipline that you just don't have. Otherwise, you risk triggering buyer's remorse and losing respect in the long term. So I highly advise that you understand who you are. Understand yourself and your limits. That way you're not shattering expectations that you could never meet in the first place. The next gift you give women for value surplus. And if you didn't see this one coming, you're an idiot. Mind-blowing sex. And I meant that, by the way, you definitely should have seen this coming. Yes, fellas, that is very true. Giving good dick is paramount. I take that back. Giving excellent dick is paramount. In my humble opinion, you don't have a choice. In this day and age, you simply cannot compete by doing mediocre stuff in the bedroom. You have to blow her mind. And also her back. On a biological level, the entire reason women and men get together is procreation. So if this part isn't going well, nothing is. And please don't listen to people that say dumb shit like, Don't make sex the foundation of your relationship. Because the basis of all non-platonic relationships is sex. In fact, sex is such a pivotal point in a relationship, it gets its own checkpoint in the compliance ladder. It literally changes the dynamic of any relationship. So yes, it's quite important. So treat it with the respect it deserves and get good at it quickly. Now, how does one get good in this area? Good question. As far as getting good in this area goes, there's only three things you need to keep in mind. Rhythm, consistency, overstimulation. Rhythm has mostly to do with your ability to find a pace and stick to it. You skip a beat, you fuck up the rhythm. I can't be as detailed as I want to be on here, but if y'all want a guide, let me know. Two, consistency. Your ability to keep a rhythm for a long period of time. This one is honestly more a mechanical thing, so you're gonna have to train yourself here. The better your endurance, the better your consistency. And I'm not just talking about your missile down there. I'm talking about even with your fingers and your tongue and your jaw. Last thing you want is for your fingers to start cramping up at some point. You gotta think about it like an athletic performance and train accordingly. And then the last is overstimulation. This is where we wrap the other things up in a nice little bow. You take the rhythm and the consistency, and then you pretty much add a multiplier to it. 
basically you have rhythm and consistency in multiple areas at once. It's like scaling up a brick and mortar business. You just open up multiple branches and locations, right? Because if you have your rhythm and you stay consistent with it, but you do that in multiple areas at once, that's where happiness comes from. And now for the seventh and final gift that you give women for a value surplus, love. Now, when I say love, I'm not just talking about how you feel about her. I'm talking specifically about your ability to make her feel things she's never felt before. Love and the opportunity for a woman to fall in love is by far the most exciting thing that can happen to a woman. It's also the scariest. For women, love is like skydiving. It's like free falling through the air thousands of feet above ground. It's exciting and fun and exhilarating. But aside from the possibility that her parachute just might not deploy, there's also the fact that she has absolutely no control over the fucking parachute because she has to put her complete trust in her dive instructor, which is you. As much as she enjoys letting go and just falling through the air with reckless abandon, there's still the fear that her dive instructor might be reckless. And guess what? He most likely is because what kind of guy skydives? The playful and reckless carefree attitude is attractive to her, but it's also a huge cause for concern. Achieving that sweet spot between danger and safety, that is what love is. And that is the greatest gift you will ever give a woman. It's also the most addictive drug you can give them. And they're all junkies for it. Now one giant misconception people have around love is that women take longer to fall in love than men do. I am more than happy to let you know that is false. Women don't take longer to fall in love than men. In fact, in my personal experience, men take way longer to fall in love than women do. Because what most men refer to as love is really just lust. Men don't usually get to love until certain conditions have been met. Women, on the other hand, are quick to fall in love. If it looks like there's a lot of time that passes before a woman falls in love, there's a few reasons for that. For one, the things that women need in a man to actually fall in love are things that need to be tested and found out about first. Don't get it twisted. Women are as visual as men. However, to a woman, looking the part and being the part are two entirely different things. So they have a bit of a vetting process, and that in itself usually takes time. But once they have irrefutable proof that you are who you say you are, they fall in love instantaneously. Another thing might be genuine fear. This one is actually a lot more common than you think it is. Women are terrified to fall in love or to admit when they're falling in love. Another thing which is kind of similar to the last one, they might just hate the feeling of losing control. A woman in love is essentially the puppet of her lover. And a few women out there just don't like being puppets. Regardless of what the reason is, love happens instantaneously for women. And it's important to know that as you give this gift. Because if you end up taking your time and playing the long game, you enter her frame. You should be speeding things up. Things should be happening at your pace. But more on that later.